Why the long face? We lost another game. That's three games in a row. Well, you've been missing a lot of basketball practice lately. I'm good at basketball. I live, breathe, and eat basketball. You may be good at basketball, Yuri, but it's a team sport. You need to practice with your teammates in order to develop a good defensive and offensive strategy. Huh? Your team should be like parts of a cell. Parts of a cell? What can I possibly learn from something as small as a cell? Well, for starters, they have teamwork. They work together in order for the cell to live and multiply. Don't worry, you'll know what I'm talking about when we get to K-Hub. don't get it, Christine. Nothing's happening. Where's the teamwork here? Yuri, you really won't be able to see what the cell parts are doing because they are really, really small. Ah, I see. I mean, I see why I don't see it. But how do I know what part of cell does this or that? Well, Yuri, today is your lucky day because Dr. Bio who has a PhD in none other than biology, would be online in any second now to teach us about the cell and its parts and functions and probably a little teamwork too. There she is! Students, what do you know about the cell? Ma'am, all organisms are made up of cells. Very good, Ashley. Ma'am, I have read that all cells have organelles. Very good. Mm. Ma'am, I've also read that the cell is the smallest part of every living organism. You are all correct. Do you know that understanding the cellular nature of life came very slowly? Okay, Havers, today we will study the parts of the cell and their functions. The modern-day cell theory was formulated only after about 200 years since the introduction of microscopy. In 1665, English scientist Robert Hooke observed a piece of quark under a simple microscope. He observed little boxes which he called cells because he thought these structures resembled tiny rooms or cells occupied by monks. He also reported that in living plants, these cells are filled with juices. In 1673, Anton van Leeuwenhoek observed microscopic organisms from pond water, which he called animalcules. Later, these organisms were found to be bacteria and protozoans. He also reported his observations of blood cells and sperm cells. In 1805, German naturalist Lawrence Oaken postulated that all organisms originated from and consist of cells. This became the initial statement of the modern cell theory. In 1833, Robert Brown discovered the nucleus in plant cells, which were later also observed in animal cells. As the microscope became more powerful, scientists Matthias Leiden and Rudolf Virchow were able to see structures inside the cells. They also observed that cells would grow larger and divide into smaller but still living cells. Furthermore, they noted that some organisms are unicellular. 
while others are multicellular. Rudolf Virchow also concluded that the cell is the basic structural unit of life and that every cell is formed from pre-existing cell. Based on these observations, the modern-day cell theory evolved. The three principles of the modern cell theory state that First, every living organism is made up of one or more cells. Some organisms like the bacteria and some protozoans are unicellular, while some organisms like plants and animals are made up of many cells. Second, cells are the basic unit of organization of all organisms. Third, cells arise only by division of a previous cell. Now, we will study the parts of a typical cell and the functions of these parts. All cells have at least three components. The plasma membrane, also called the cell membrane, performs the following functions. One, isolates the cytoplasm or the liquid component inside the cell from the external environment. Two, regulates the flow of materials between the cytoplasm and its environment. For example, acquiring nutrients and expelling waste. And three, it allows interaction with other cells. In all living organisms, the genetic material is the deoxyribonucleic acid or the DNA. The DNA contains the cell's hereditary blueprint in which is stored the instructions for making all other parts of the cell and for producing new daughter cells. In eukaryotic cells, the DNA is contained in a separate membrane-bound structure called the nucleus. In prokaryotic cells, it is found in an area called the nucleoid and is not separated by membranes from the rest of the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm consists of all the materials inside the cell membrane and in eukaryotic cells outside the nucleus, which is itself contained by a membrane. The cytoplasm includes water, salts, and assortment of organic molecules including enzymes as well as proteins. The cytoplasm also contains a variety of structures called organelles. Each organelle performs a distinct cellular function. Chromosomes contain the DNA. Nucleus, membrane-bound container for chromosomes. Nuclear envelope encloses nucleus and regulates movements of materials into and out of nucleus. The mitochondria carries out the process of cellular respiration where chemical energy from food is transformed into energy molecule called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Endoplasmic reticulum are extensive network of membranes that connect the nuclear envelope to the cell membrane. ER synthesizes membrane components and lipids. Ribosomes attached in the surface of rough endoplasmic reticulum and are also found in the cytoplasm. These are sites of protein synthesis.
Golgi complex. It modifies and packages proteins and lipids produced by the endoplasmic reticulum. Vacuoles are fluid-filled sac in the cytoplasm containing crystals, inorganic salts, sugars, and excess water. Lysosomes contain intracellular digestive enzymes. Let me describe the important role of the lysosomes. These organelles contain digestive enzymes enclosed in its membrane sac. Inside the cell, they fuse with the food vacuoles and digest the nutrients the cell contains with their enzymes. Also, the bacteria ingested by our white blood cells are also digested by the enzymes of the lysosomes. Moreover, the lysosomes can engulf and digest parts of another organelle, making its molecules available for the construction of other organelles, thus serving as recycling sites for other organelles. See how nature works? Amazing, isn't it? By the way, all the cell parts which you have identified and discussed are found both in animal cells and plant cells. However, plant cells have cell parts which are not found in animal cells. Could you tell me what these are? Cell wall surrounds the cell membrane and is composed mainly of cellulose. It protects the cell from mechanical injury. The rigidity of the cell wall provides mechanical strength and accounts for the definite shape of plant cells. Plastids are pigment-containing storage organelles found in plant cells and photosynthetic proteins. There are two kinds of plastids, the chromoplasts and the leucoplasts. Chromoplasts contain green, red, yellow, orange, or violet pigments in plants. The most common and important chromoplasts are the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts contain the green pigment chlorophyll, which captures the light energy for photosynthesis. Thus, the chloroplast is the site for photosynthesis, without which life will not be possible on Earth. Leucoplasts are colorless plastids which serve as storage centers for starch. Every single cell in my body is happy. Every single cell in my body is well. Every single cell in my body is happy. Now I get it, Dr. B's lecture was just so enlightening. The cell has several parts. Each has its own specific functions that benefits the cell as a whole. Teamwork! Now, having learned all that, can you enumerate the cell parts and their respective functions? I definitely can. But before that, can you take one for the team and buy us some snacks? I knew that was coming. 
えー Thanks for the snacks, Yuri Don't worry Tomorrow It'll be my treat Now let's enumerate the different parts of the cell and its functions We'll start with you Are you ready? Go! There's the cell membrane which holds and protects the cell It also acts as the gate of the cell since it controls the movement of materials in and out of the cell. The cytoplasm is a watery gel-like material in which the cell parts move. Mm. The mitochondria, the cell powerhouse, produce and supply most of the energy of the cell. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the vacuoles stores food, water, and chemicals. The nucleus, the control center of the cell, acts as the brain of the cell. It regulates and controls all cell activities. The nuclear membrane is the nucleus's bodyguard. It protects and surrounds the nucleus. It also controls the movement of material in and out of the nucleus. Then there's the cell wall and chloroplasts, which can only be found in plant cells. The cell wall surrounds and protects the cell by making it stiff and strong. While the chloroplast contains chlorophyll that captures sunlight and uses it to produce food for the cell. Now that was very good, Yuri. I'm impressed. Where are you going, Yuri? Uh, I'm off to apply the most important thing that I've learned. From the humble cell. Three more.